The Liberal government vowed to introduce legislation to legalize marijuana in the, in the spring. Is that plan still on track at this yeah, point? Yeah, it is, but I really need to clarify. Our, our plan is not merely to legalize marijuana. Frankly, if that's all we were going to do, I think it would be very problematic. The, the, the plan is to replace the criminal sanction that currently is in place for the control of cannabis with a, with a system of strict regulation, regulation which will control the production, the distribution, and the consumption of this drug. Um, and, and, and it's really important to, to be aware of the public policy aims that we're, we're intending to achieve through a system of strict regulation. And that's to do a better job protecting our kids, to take the profits away from organized crime, and protect the health of our citizens. And that can't, can't be done merely through legalization, but it's, but it's made possible by, by lifting the criminal prohibition and replacing it with a far more effective system of comprehensive regulation. On, uh, that, for example, in the production of ca cannabis. Right now, it's left to criminal enterprise to produce. And, and what's produced is untested, unregulated, and unsafe. And what we want to make sure is that if, if, if Canadian adults, and we are talking about adult usage here, choose to use it, then they should be able to obtain something which is of known potency, purity, and provenance, and, and that it's been, it's, been, it's been produced under you know, good production practices, that taxes have been collected, and that the people responsible for its production are accountable f for that production. It's the same thing with, with, with distribution. Right now, that distribution is in the hands of drug dealers. And, and, and quite frankly, if, if, we, if we want to keep it out of the hands of kids, it, it makes far more sense to, to have a highly regulated system of distribution that controls where it's sold, who it's sold to, what are the circumstances, places reasonable limits on advertising, packaging, provides warnings on labels so that people can make informed decisions, and most importantly, so it's not sold to a kid. And so you've been meeting with stakeholders across the country to discuss legalization and yep. regulation. Uh, who exactly are you meeting with and what are you hearing from them? Okay, let, let, if I may, let me begin on, on the process of consultation. Um, as we began this, back in, in June of, of last year, we put together a, a task force of nine eminently qualified Canadians from the fields of, of public health, justice, public safety, and problematic substance use. And we asked th that, that panel to conduct very broad consultations. They, they received over 30,000 online submissions from Can Canadians from coast to coast. They received several hundred uh, written submissions from various organizations like the Canadian Medical Association, from educators, from health professionals, uh, from the business community, from law enforcement, uh, from people who are responsible for public safety and, and in, our, in our communities. And they also did a number of expert panels. They traveled from coast to coast because there are regional differences in, in the perspective and the lived experience with, with this issue and with the control of this substance. And so they, they did, I think, some outstanding work, provided the, the government with an evidence-based uh, document which contains the advice of experts on the best way to, to achieve a public health framework for the control of cannabis and to help us achieve the things that we set out to do with regarding kids, communities, and health. And so we, the government received that report in December. And, and now w the government has a number of decisions to, to make with respect to those many recommendations that the task force made. And in order to make sure that we get it right, we are continuing with the consultation. It's part of the work that I've been asked to do. And going out into communities, speaking to, I've, I've spoken to the police chief in every community I've visited, but I'm also speaking with mayors, with, with other civic officials, with people who represent public health agencies, with the school boards. Uh, with people who are responsible for other regulatory activity in our municipalities and across the provinces. And, and that's to gain that valuable experience and advice that the people on the ground who work in our communities, and, and, and what we're finding overwhelmingly is, is, is there's a strong consensus that we must do better. That right now the current system in which our kids are using cannabis at the highest rate of any country in the world is failing our kids. And, and so there, there needs to be a better way, in, and, because, and we have to find that way to protect our children. There's also a frustration that, that this is currently a, a system of production and distribution controlled by organized crime. Literally billions of dollars in profits are flowing into people who are responsible for much of the violence and victimization that's taking place in our communities. And so we want to take those profits away from them and reinvest part of that profit back into public education, research, prevention, treatment and rehabilitation that will make our community safer and help, help us protect our kids. And uh, according to a 2016 news report, you held a series of informal meetings with advocates for illegal pot dispensaries. What did you take away from these meetings? Well, we've tried to listen to every voice. 
Um, one of the challenges that communities right across Canada are facing is there are some individuals who are ignoring the laws that currently exist. We have a system of cannabis control in this country which is primarily based uh, first of all on the Control Drugs and Substances Act but also a number of regulations um, that, that have arisen out of various court decisions and, and government legislation around medical marijuana access control. And, and unfortunately, there are a number of individuals who have sort of jumped ahead of, of any regulatory changes and, and are still producing and selling marijuana illegally. Um, we, I've, I've had some discussion with representative of, of those organizations, and I remind them that the law should be obeyed mm -hmm. and, and that we are, it's important, I, I know they're interested in their profits. What our government is interested in, what, what I think all Canadians are interested in, is protecting our kids and our communities mm -hmm. and, and the health of our, our citizens. And, and so, quite frankly, I, I'm, I'm strongly of the opinion, I would urge all Canadians, obey the laws as they currently exist, and we'll come in with a more effective regulatory system of control. But until that's in place, the only system that is, is in place is, is the criminal law. Those laws should be obeyed, they should be upheld, and they should be enforced. And will there be any place for these existing dispensaries once marijuana is legalized and regulated? Well, the, the responsibility for determining the regulatory framework and the, and, and, and the environment for distribution really rests with the provinces. And within our constitution, that's their responsibility. Now, there, like one of the things that in the discussions that I've had and my government is having with the provincial authorities is, is making sure that we're all clearly focused on, on the public purpose aims that we're trying to achieve. And whatever systems the province chooses to put in place, we want to make sure it is an effective regime for keeping this out of the hands of kids and competing effectively with organized crime. But this is primarily a provincial responsibility, and they'll make that determination. Um, I, I anticipate that, that they'll be very responsible uh, in, in, those, in that determination on where's the best place uh, for the distribution of this to make sure that it, only a licensed, legally produced product is available for, for sale and that the conditions of sale are, are sufficiently controlled and regulated to keep, make sure that it isn't sold to kids and that, and that it, we don't want to promote its use. I think, I think we want to be very clear about that as well. We want to significantly reduce its current levels of consumption among young people and we want to make sure that if adults choose to use this, that they're able to make a safe, healthier and socially responsible choice. And, um in December, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said municipalities should enforce the law when dealing with uh, legal marijuana dispensaries. Is this something you're communicating with uh, police chiefs you've met with recently? Yes, we've, we've had a number of discussions with them, but I also want to be clear. I used to be a police chief myself. Police chiefs have, have a great deal of, of, of responsibilities with respect to public safety. They've got to prioritize their limited resources for the, all of those things which will maintain the safety of their communities. Law enforcement is their responsibility, but they have to set their own local priorities. But I would also remind them that the, the unregulated, uncontrolled uh, sale of this drug, particularly to young people, is a significant risk to those kids and to our communities. And, and so um, they set their own priorities, but I, I believe that, first of all, I would urge all Canadians to obey the law. I've been spending 40 years doing that and, and I haven't changed my position on that. So I would urge Canadians to obey the law. The laws are there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. But I would also say that laws should be upheld and respected and in order to be upheld and respected, they also have to be enforced. Mm -hmm. and, and some critics have blamed the Liberal government's vow to legalize and regulate marijuana for causing hundreds of these dispensaries to open up across the country. How would you respond to that criticism? Well, I, you know, I, I get a little frustrated sometimes when I hear, and, and, and frankly, criticism can be very valuable. It's part of the parliamentary process. But when, when the, the critic only refers to legalization, they seem awfully afraid to ever use the word regulate. They, they, they seem you know, very, very nervous about acknowledging that we're actually talking about much more law, not less, a far more comprehensive and effective system of regulatory control. And so I would simply remind the critics, as I would remind all Canadians, that our, our approach, I believe, will be a far more effective approach to protecting kids, to, to keeping our communities safe and dealing with organized crime and protecting the health of our citizens. It's based on evidence. It's based on the advice of experts. We've also learned from the experience and quite frankly some of the mistakes that have been made in other jurisdictions and we're applying those learnings to, to our approach. We've been proceeding very cautiously, very advisedly. We have sought that evidence and that advice and we're committed to bringing forward public policy which is in the best interest of all Canadians and based on the best advice and evidence that we can get. And, and based on your experience as a former police chief, what do you think the biggest impact legalization regulation would have on policing? Well, first of all, 
But right now, the, the police are expending resources, and the criminal justice system is somewhat burdened by the enforcement of the criminal law. But quite frankly, I, I believe we're going to have to ask more of the police, uh, particularly at, at the introduction of these regulations. Well, well, people learn how the system will work, but it's not just a burden on the police. There are some things that I think we, we can, through regulation, make more efficient and more effective in the activities of the police. I think the work they do is tremendously important. But we also have to do a better job in public education. We have to do a better job in pre prevention and demand reduction for these drugs, particularly among young people. And, and, and so the police are not the only players. They're important players in, in, in this work, but there are others. And, and certainly people in the public health field, parents, teachers, peers, all have a role to play in this, and we want to make sure that they've got the information they need, the support they need, to, to make this system work. And I think ultimately, we, we can do a better job making our community safe. The current situation, frankly, is unacceptable. Like, I, I don't think it's a, it's a source of pride for anyone that Canada has the highest rates of cannabis use among young people of any country in the world. Now, this drug can be performance degrading. It can have a very negative effect on adolescent brain development and on outcome for our kids. But the current system has many social and health harms. And the approach that we've tried to take is, is how do we reduce those harms? How do we make it healthier for all of our citizens and in particular for our kids? But also how do we reduce some of the, the, the social harm associated to this drug's use and abuse, but also to our current system of control? And, and so we're hoping that we can make safer communities, make it better and safer for our kids um, by, by bringing in an effective system of regulatory control. It is going to require a lot of work and an effort, and we're committed to making that work and to, and to providing support and the resources that all of the participants in this will, will require to make it work. I, I think you know, it, it's, 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 it's worthwhile because it will make our community safer and it will protect our kids. And research shows that marijuana use poses a risk to developing brains up to the age of 25. Will people under the age of 25 be able to legally buy marijuana? Then? Well, and again, there, there are some decisions need to be made by both the, 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 the federal government and the provinces. There is a recommendation that, that we received from the task force that suggested as a minimum age, the age of 18, but also a recommendation that provinces could make a determination of, of setting the age higher, not lower, but higher. And it, and it really is a decision based on competing values. On the one hand, we want to protect kids from any potential health harm related to its use. And on the other, you don't want to leave this vast market among young people over to organized crime. And, and so th at least the information of the task force and their advice was based on the idea of adult usage, that we want to keep this drug away from youth, but, but at a certain age, when a person is deemed in law to be an adult, that they should be able to make a well-informed choice based on actual evidence of uh, uh, decisions about their own health and their well-being. And, and that there should be a legal path for them to do that, which is also not only healthy, but socially responsible so that it doesn't interfere with the quality of other people's lives or having a negative impact on the communities in which we live. Okay, and um, through this process, what's one of the most interesting things you've learned about marijuana that you didn't know prior to becoming an MP, would you say? Well, you know, I had a lot of experience, actually, in enforcing the law with respect to this drug. Um, I've learned a little bit more as, uh, around it's the, 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 the issues around medical marijuana because that's, that's an important part of the consideration of our work. But, but I think perhaps among the things that we have learned and the experience in other jurisdictions, I think, and, and candidly, they've admitted to making some mistakes in their approach. You know, they approach this from a, a purely commercial regulatory framework about how to legalize it and maximize the revenue they gain from it. And, and one of the things we learned from their experience is that there are many significant unintended consequences, negative consequences for community by that approach. And, and so that's one of the reasons we're taking a very different approach. We're taking a public health approach. That our, that our intention through our regulations, strict regulations, is, is, is to reduce those social and health harms. And, and one of the things that, that they told us, it's very difficult once you realize that you've made some mistakes and, and have gone perhaps too loose with, the, with their legalization scheme, that it was very difficult to get strict afterwards. And what they've urged us to do, and a lesson that I believe we've learned, is to start off very cautiously very prudently, and make sure that we put a strong, strict regulatory framework in place that does the job of protecting our kids. They also they strongly recommended to, to do, get good baseline data, do, do uh, constant measurement, and, and be a bit able to adapt 
to a changing and evolving situation. Those are really useful things to learn because one of the lessons that they've shared with us is you just can't put, in their case, a fairly loose regulatory framework in place and hope for the best because a lot of bad things can happen from that. And so we've tried to learn from that. We've tried to apply those lessons, go out and get the best advice we can, and, and hopefully create a far safer situation for our citizens.